As the world tries to avoid a climate catastrophe, technologies that capture carbon dioxide emissions have become central to many countries' climate strategies. We need to pursue the new technologies, whether it's hydrogen or ammonia or direct carbon capture. We're interested in uh, carbon capture and storage. It's essential that in the meantime, we deploy the latest carbon capture, use and storage technology. So what's the state of the carbon capture industry now and what are the challenges it faces? The most common form of carbon capture collects the gas from a point source, such as a power plant. The CO2 can then be moved to permanent underground storage. Or more commonly, it's used for another industrial purpose first. Currently, most of the CO2 captured this way is injected into oil wells to free trapped oil. Drillers say this enhanced oil recovery method can make petroleum more climate friendly. But environmentalists say it's counterproductive. Industry data shows there's over 40 commercial point source capture projects operating around the world now with a capacity to store 49 million metric tons of carbon dioxide annually. That's about 0.13% of the world's annual energy and industry-related CO2 emissions. Another form of the technology is direct air capture, with some companies trying more creative solutions like this one using ballooning to capture the gas in high altitudes. Data from the International Energy Agency shows that only 27 direct air capture hubs have been commissioned globally, capturing just 10,000 metric tons of CO2 a year. But some 130 facilities are being planned around the world, with the U.S. announcing in August $1.2 billion in grants for two in Texas and Louisiana. One key challenge is the tech's high cost. The price tag for point source capture projects range from $15 to $120 per metric ton of captured carbon. With direct air capture, it can cost up to $1,000 per metric ton. Some countries are trying to use public subsidies to get the projects going, such as the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act passed in 2022 that offers tax credits for every ton captured. The cost is a tough sell when there's little proof to show the technology is ready to be deployed at scale. But developers of the text say funding is crucial to push it further. Here's Shashank Samala, CEO of one of the firms that just won a federal grant for a capture hub in Louisiana. Two years ago, we were at a petri dish where we were removing grams of CO2 from the air. In two years, we run from grams to kilograms to hundreds of kilograms to tons to, you know, soon hundreds of tons. Where captured carbon can be stored is limited by geology. And getting the carbon to storage sites could require extensive pipeline networks or even shipping fleets, posing potential new obstacles. Here's U.S. climate envoy John Kerry summing up the concerns over carbon capture. The jury is out on whether or not you're going to be able to capture enough emissions and contain them and get the permissions you need to deploy the infrastructure and all the other things, will it be competitive? Will it come online in time? But as countries gather for the 28th United Nations Climate Change Conference, where they'll look to hammer out ways to cut carbon emissions, many say it's important to try every means possible.